Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own ERC20 token on Ethereum with the Open Zeppelin Solidity Library, which is the fastest and most secure way to start building your own Ethereum tokens. So we'll see how far we get today. Um, this might turn into more videos, so be sure to subscribe to the channel uh, to see more videos about building your own Ethereum tokens. So Open Zeppelin is a framework for building secure smart contracts on Ethereum. And it's a library that uh, provides a lot of smart contracts to kind of get you started writing your own smart contracts. Um, because, you know, the Solidity programming language allows you to, you know, bring in uh, other contracts and use contract inheritance and things like that. And that's exactly what uh, we'll do with the Open Zeppelin Solidity library today when we build our own token. Now, why is it so important to use something like Open Zeppelin uh, Solidity when you're writing your own Ethereum token or, you know, you're writing your own Ethereum smart contract? Well, it's important because, you know, all the code on the Ethereum blockchain is immutable. All smart contract code is. Um, so, you know, if you're going to deploy something um, to the main network, uh, you want to make sure that it's uh, secure. You want to make sure that uh, it's bug free. And, you know, Open Zeppelin is a really great starting point uh, and a great reference point for creating smart contracts that are secure and bug free. And this is, you know, community source, community vetted code um, that, you know, ensures that you're not going to run any problems like that. You know, this is community sourced and community vetted code uh, that's going to greatly reduce the chances that you're going to run into any problems when you are deploying code to the Ethereum blockchain. So you can kind of take a look at what's inside this library. Um, there's a lot of smart contracts that are kind of organized in a nice fashion here. Um, today we're looking at the token contracts. Um, you can see ERC20 token contracts, and we'll take a look at those momentarily. There's also like ERC721 contracts, you know, for creating non-fungible tokens like crypto collectibles. Um, there's also plenty of uh, those crowd sale contracts, you know, so that you can build your own ICO. And um, there's other, you know, pretty useful libraries uh, like math libraries um, that you can use for, you know, doing calculations inside your smart contract and things like that. You can get started developing your own Ethereum token with Open Zeppelin pretty quickly um, with the Truffle framework. You know, this is a framework for developing smart contracts in Ethereum. Um, so the first step would be making sure that you have Node.js installed. You can go to your terminal and type Node-V. You should go in ahead and install that if you don't already. And the next thing would be um, to make sure you have Truffle installed. Uh, you can go to your terminal and type Truffle version. If you don't have Truffle installed, you can install it with uh, Node. npm install Truffle. So what I'm going to do first is create a new project directory. I'll say mk here. I'll say my token. And I'll cd into my token. And the first thing I'll do is uh, initialize a new Truffle project. Truffle init. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is um, create a new package.json file. Let's say npm init. And I'll just do the standard configuration here. Oops. And now what I'll do is I'll install the uh, Open Zeppelin Solidity library that we'll use to create our own Ethereum token. And I'll do that like this. I'll say uh, npm install dash g, um, or sorry, actually I'll do npm install uh, Open Zeppelin Solidity. Solidity. And I'll say save dev. All right. Now we can open our project. I'm going to open this in Sublime Text. We can see our uh, package.json file here. And we can see that we have installed uh, the Open Zeppelin Solidity package uh, here inside of our project. Now, while we're here, I'm going to uh, ignore, I'm going to say ignore this file. I'm going to ignore the node modules. All right. And uh, now what I'm going to do is initialize a Git repository. Say initial commit. Oops, forgot to add all the files. 
All right. So we can see uh, what we installed here inside the Node Modules directory. Um, this is the Open Zeppelin Solidity library that we just looked at in uh, the GitHub page. We can see all the contracts here. Uh, we can see the token contract, which is what we're going to look at today. We're going to see the ERC20 tokens here. And we'll use some of these tokens to create our own ERC20 token um, with Ethereum and Truffle. So what I'm going to do is first um, basically create a new contract. I'll go to my contract directory. This is the migrations.sol. And I'm just going to create a new uh, contract in the same directory. And I'll call this uh, my token. I can go ahead and create my new token contract like this. I can say uh, pragma solidity uh, 0.4. Dot, let's go 2.4. I believe that's what's uh, specified in my truffle version. Yep, OK. And uh, now what I can do is just say uh, contract, I'll say my token. And for now, I'll just uh, open this like this. We'll just have a blank contract for the time being. Now, how can we turn this smart contract into an actual ERC-20 token? Well, let's just take a quick recap on the ERC-20 standard. Um, now, remember, ERC-20 is really just a standard that specifies how Ethereum tokens should work. It basically specifies, you know, the functions that it should have on, you know, the external interface um, that you can read, you know, values of, like total supply of the token, uh, read balances for people who hold, hold the token, um, it, you know, adds uh, functions that allow people to purchase the token and things like that. It allowed to be traded on cryptocurrency exchanges. And so, yeah, that's what we want to implement. We want to implement all of that behavior inside the smart contract. And you might have seen my other videos where I show you how to, you know, build your own cryptocurrency uh, token on Ethereum uh, with DAP token. And we actually built out an ERC-20 token step by step. We, you know, we built out each function um, that is required in the ERC-20 interface. And, you know, we wired up all the internals to behave like we want it to behave. Um, and that's one way you could do it. You know, you could write everything out yourself. Um, or you could, you know, kind of get started with a library that implements some of this functionality for you. And that's exactly what the Open Zeppelin Solidity Library does. So what we want to do is, you know, use some of the contracts in the Open Zeppelin Solidity Library to get us started. And they'll provide some of the functions like uh, that are they're specified in the ERC-20 standard, like total supply, balance of, transfer, transfer from, um, because some of these internals uh, are, are, you know, solves problems, and we can get them for free with a library. So how do we do that? How do we add this functionality to this contract? Well, let's do two things. Let's take a look at the functionality we want to bring in, and let's... Um, see how we bring it in. So let's go to uh, our node modules over here. We'll go to the Open Zeppelin Solidity Library. We'll go to the Contracts folder, Token, ERC-20. And we'll first look at uh, this ERC-20 basic. So if you look inside this file, um, this has uh, a contract that implements this total supply function. And this is really just an abstract contract. It just has the interface. You know, these functions don't have any uh, logic inside of them. It just tells you that it has a total supply function. Um, and if you look at, you know, ERC-20 uh, here, this is actually, um, you know, an additional contract. And I want you to notice a couple things, and this is important because this is how we're going to build our token. You can see that this erc20.sol file um, imports another smart contract, another Solidity file like this. It uses this import keyword and requires the file in the same directory with the file name like this. And, you know, that's how it's bringing in this file right here. Uh, sorry, this file. Uh, no, it's erc20basic. Sorry, this file right here. And then it's using inheritance um, by saying, you know, this ERC-20 contract inherits from this ERC-20 basic when this, you know, contract ERC-20 is ERC-20 basic. It's basically saying that this is a child of uh, this contract. And that's kind of similar to, you know, an object-oriented programming language or something like that. 
So this that's important to take note of because that's how we're going to build our own token. We're going to import uh, a file from the OpenZip and Solidity library, and we're going to inherit from it in order to uh, inherit or absorb a lot of the functionality that's already provided for us in um, this library. So let's take a look what we want. Uh, in order to uh, bring this in, we can see ERC20. Uh, we can also go to ERC20, uh, or, or sorry, basic token. Um, and, and yeah, this is another file that we can look at. So this is uh, important because now this actually implements some of the functionality that's in a safe, fully functional ERC20 token. It has a transfer function. Um, it has a balance of function. You can see all the internals that are wired up. Uh, also, you can take note that uh, this package, I believe, comes with uh, tests. So you can see that all these contracts are already tested. And if you want to learn how to test smart contracts, this is also a really great place to learn how to do that. Uh, we can see the tests for uh, this file here. And like I said, this is a great reference point if you want to learn. Try test yourself. So anyways, let's uh, pull this into our project. So let's take the... Um, Let's take the detail ERC20 contract. And this is a contract that I like because it allows you to specify the name of the token, the symbol, and the decimals, which is basically you know how many times this token can be divided, um, in a constructor. So essentially, when you're deploying the smart contract, it allows you to uh, bring in this information uh, right here. All right, so let's pull in um, some of the contracts in order to develop our own ERC20 token. So the first file that I want to uh, pull in is this uh, standard token file. And this implements like all this uh, functionality, like transfer from, um, allowance, increase approval, things like that. This is basically going to have all the internals that we want um, off the bat to have a fully functioning ERC20 token. So how I'm going to do that is go to this um, path, and I'm or sorry, this file. I'm going to copy the file path. And I'm going to import this file like this. I'm just going to paste the path first. Um, I'm going to put it in quotes. And what I want to do is chop off the node modules directory and put a semicolon here and say import uh, this file. So this is Open Zeppelin Solidity uh, Contracts Token ERC20 uh, Standard Token. And then I basically want to say ERC20 to uh, my token is. Um, standard token. And that will allow us to um, basically specify that this token is uh, inheriting from this standard token and will get all this functionality that's programmed inside this token for free. All right. And the next thing I want to do is um, say that this token is also a detailed ERC20 token. So let's do that. We'll say uh, detailed ERC20 token. And I'll copy this. And I will uh, paste this in here. Oops, sorry. I guess I missed that path. Copy this path. And take off the node modules directory. All right. And now what I need to do is this uh, detailed ERC20 token is going to require some uh, constructor arguments. It's going to you know, require the name, uh, the symbol, and the decimals. So what we want to do is say uh, standard token. We also want to say as, uh, we could just... We can inherit from multiple things here. Um, we can separate the things, the, the, the parents with commas and say detailed ERC20, all right? And now, in order to specify you know, this name, symbol, and decimals, uh, what we want to do is create a constructor. And this constructor is going to need to pass in the arguments uh, inside its own constructor, and then also pass them into this contract here. So let's say uh, constructor, and we'll say uh, string 
name, string, symbol, and I will say this is a, I believe it's a uint, I think it's an eight. Yeah, uint eight. Eight, and let's see decimals. All right, and now uh, what I want to do is pass these arguments into this contract that we're inheriting from. And I can do that like this. Uh, I can say detailed, oh, this is public. But here I can say, you know, detailed uh, ERC20. And let's uh, pass in the arguments here. Say name, symbol, and then decimals. All right, and I can format this code like this. Uh, and tell you what, in order to make this a little more readable, uh, I'm gonna bump this font up. And I'm also going to convert this to two spaces. Um, I think the Solidity documentation specifies four spaces, but I mean, a lot of stuff is going to two spaces nowadays. Like JavaScript does it a lot, even though I think technically, traditionally JavaScript's been a four space language. Um, but yeah, anyways, this is how uh, we can write this constructor in order to, um, you know, take take these arguments and pass them into the detailed ERC20 contract. So now what I can do is go to my terminal and make sure this compiles, but we wanna do a couple things first. Now we wanna to go to our truffle config file in order to specify uh, a compiler. And what we're gonna do is basically say, um, this is soul C, which basically is the compiler, solidity compiler, and we're gonna specify the settings. We're gonna specify the settings for the optimizer, we're gonna enable it, and we're gonna run it with 200. Um, so that's important for a lot of reasons. I'm not going to go into depth on why or at the moment, uh, but I'm going to start with this setting. And uh, yeah, we'll see if our uh, source code is written correctly by trying to compile our smart contract. So what I'm going to do is say truffle compile and see if it will actually uh, bring in the libraries, see if we made any errors. So we can see it first compiled the uh, migrations contract, which was you know the existing contract when we opened the Truffle project, and then it compiled the uh, you know token that we created, and whenever it did that, it uh, pulled in all these libraries that were you know dependent upon one another. Um, you know we imported you know standard token and detailed ERC twenty token, and all those libraries depend upon ERC twenty basic ERC twenty detailed ERC20, uh, basic token, safe math, things like that. And it wrote the artifacts to the uh, build contracts directory. And if you're not familiar with that, you know you can go to uh, uh, build contracts, and this is basically our compiled contracts. So if you go to uh, you know, ERC20, sorry, our my token, you can see the contract ABI. You know, this is just the abstract binary interface um, that's used for you know JavaScript and and also getting compiled on the byte code for the EVM to understand. Um, so yeah, you can this comp compiled correctly, and this is the compiled output. Um, this is the you know the artifact that Truffle uses in order to uh, read your contracts in the inside of the framework. So yeah, the compilation worked correctly. And that's actually where I'm going to stop the video for today. Um, and in the next video, I will probably start, uh, you know, building out this token a little bit and migrating it to the blockchain and showing you how to uh, use it and test it and things like that. Um, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out that next video when it comes out. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University. <laughs>